Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Happy New Year, Michael, and welcome back to the show. Happy 2017, and thank you for having me. Homeland Security wants to take over the U.S. election system. Is this a good move? Uh, if it were anybody else, I would say it's a good move. I mean, part of the confusion of all these elections is the states all have different rules about how the elections are to be done, different rules about uh, eligibility. Uh, there should be a national standard. That being said, uh, I certainly uh, do not see the Department of Homeland Security uh, as being uh, somebody that I would trust. And I think uh, this attempt to have the Department of Homeland Security uh, take over the election system is to avoid another embarrassment in the future where the selected candidate is actually defeated by the popular will of the American people. And uh, I'm hoping that when, after Trump is sworn into office, we're going to be able to convince him uh, that the solution is not to have the Department of Homeland Security treating our elections the way TSA treats our luggage, uh, but to, in fact, have a completely new system that is perfectly open and transparent, and I've already started working on one uh, that makes cheating very, very difficult, as opposed to our current system of electronic machines and tabulation centers, which is designed to facilitate and then conceal election fraud. India has election ID cards for its entire population. Would that be a good move for the U.S.? Uh, I think it would be an excellent move, but of course you're going to get screaming uh, hysterics from the liberals uh, who have brought all these illegal immigrants and refugees into this country to vote for Hillary Clinton. And two different studies, one by VoteFraud.org and the other by TrueTheVote.org, uh, indicate at least three million non-citizens did vote for Hillary Clinton this last election. In Canada, of course, we have Elections Canada. It's a federal organization that looks after elections, but it's supposed to be neutral just to make sure that you can vote fairly and that the right people do get to vote. And in a lot of cases, they use old-fashioned paper ballots because apparently they're harder to hack than computers. Absolutely. Uh, we should get rid of these electronic machines. There's an amazing documentary that HBO put out a while back called Hacking Democracy, and it focused primarily on a lady named Bev Harris, who runs a website called blackboxvoting.org. And it showed uh, how these companies that are making these electronic voting machines will not let anybody look inside them. They claim that uh, software that counts button presses uh, is somehow proprietary. Uh, and that stands in stark contrast with gambling machines in Las Vegas, which by law are wide open to inspection by anybody. Uh, there, there are agencies that go on by and uh, make sure that these machines are behaving honestly and not cheating the customers. Why are election machines not subject to the same scrutiny? And in the, at the end of this documentary, they demonstrate how easy it is to change the outcome of an election on one of these electronic voting machines and leave absolutely no trace. And it was really very telling because one of the election workers where they conducted the test, she literally broke down in tears because she was working there for the Elections Commission, and she was absolutely convinced that she was fulfilling democracy, and all of a sudden it's staring her in the face that everything she believed was an absolute lie and it was a fraud. So I'm in agreement. We should not have electronic voting machines. There should be nowhere in the pipeline of an election where the ballots are somehow obscured from public scrutiny and verification. And uh, I, I've come up with the, the frame of a system that I think uh, is really going to work, but it has to be coupled up with uh, uh, absolutely verifiable voter ID requirements. And I know all the uh, uh, pro-illegal immigrant people and refugee people are going to scream that you know anybody should be able to walk across the border and immediately vote themselves more welfare benefits. 
Uh, but the, the rules are you have to be a U.S. citizen to engage in our democratic process. I see no reason not to enforce that. Uh, and what was amazing is during the early part of last year, lawyers from the Hillary campaign and the Democratic National Committee uh, were running all over the country overturning voter ID laws claiming that they were racist, that they were discriminatory, uh, that which is ridiculous. I mean, everybody has an ID. You need an ID to drive a car. If you're not driving a car, you can get a state ID. You need ID cards to avail yourself of these various social programs. Uh, the idea that people didn't have ID and, and, and couldn't get one for racist reasons is nonsense. The only people who can't get an ID are the ones who shouldn't be here, and they shouldn't be allowed to vote. Uh, another thing that we ought to uh, uh, use is a system they have over in the Middle East where when you vote, there's a little jar uh, of this dye, and you stick your finger in it. And this dye takes about two weeks to fade away, but once your finger is dyed, they know you voted and you can't vote again. And one of the scandals we had in this last election uh, was, uh, and this was actually revealed by the New York City uh, Commissioner of Elections, was saying that they were just rounding up all these illegal immigrants and they'd go to a precinct and they'd vote, then they'd bus them to another precinct and vote, and by the end of the day, these same illegal immigrants had voted 15, 20 times, all for Hillary Clinton. And it's an absolute disgrace of a system. And uh, I, I think the reason that Obama wants to put it under the Department of Homeland Security is to exercise tighter control over anybody wanting to look at the system and verify that it's honest. And that obviously is not the way we want to go. Uh, we need a system that is absolutely transparent, paper ballots that must be saved for a year, uh, counted in full view of witnesses and representatives, and then all the totals posted for the precinct level, the county level, the city level, the state level, all the way up to the national level, so that you've got hundreds of millions of election observers able to follow the vote from their own precinct, where they know the vote was accurate, all the way up to the top. All it's going to take is a calculator. And it's a very simple and effective system, and already I'm getting people screaming about, you don't understand democracy. And as far as any organization being impartial and uh, balanced, we only need to look at our own Republican and Democratic Party leadership this last election to show what a, f a fraud that is. The Democrats were caught openly sabotaging Bernie Sanders, uh, cheating him to hand the nomination to Hillary Clinton. We saw state after state where Bernie Sanders would win the popular vote and Hillary would somehow get more delegates through the superdelegate system. And you didn't hear anybody complaining about popular vote versus uh, uh, delegates and electors back when uh, it was favoring Hillary Clinton. And even over on the GOP side, they were trying to sabotage Donald Trump all along, trying to push Ted Cruz on us, who was not even actually eligible to be president. Uh, and they did that because Jeb Bush flamed out early. And basically what it is, the entrenched political elite have lost control of the White House and a significant part of the Congress. They're in a total panic. And they're already planning on how four years from now they're going to steal the White House back for either a Clinton or a Bush so that the narcocracy can continue unimpeded. And I think that's why they're talking about letting the Department of Homeland Security, which doesn't know anything about elections to begin with, uh, they're going to be in charge to make sure nobody gets too close and peeks in uh, to see how the machinery is really running. What kind of proof do the intelligence agencies have that Russia hacked the U.S. elections? Absolutely none whatsoever. This claim of Russian hacking is the 2017 version of Saddam has nuclear weapons. Uh, it's just made up out of thin air. Uh, the, the intelligence agencies are now acknowledging there is no evidence that Russia hacked the election itself. They're still trying to focus on Russia hacking uh, the email at the DNC. Uh, but Julian Assange is saying it was an internal leak. Uh, our former ambassador to Great Britain, uh, Murray, is saying it was an internal leak. He was actually part of the chain that got the flash drive from the DNC insider and handed it uh, to WikiLeaks. Uh, William Binney, uh, former NSA, is saying if Russia had done anything to a server anywhere in the U.S., the NSA would have a record of it because all those fiber optic trunk lines coming in across the border are automatically scanned and monitored by the NSA. They don't have anything at all. Uh, basically, uh, there's a push on to try and get a war going with Russia before Donald Trump can be sworn into a office and pull the plug on this whole idea. Was there any psychological warfare going on by the KGB or its uh, new counterpart? 
No, they didn't need to. Uh, all they had to do was sit back and watch Hillary self-destruct. Uh, and, you know, Hillary's people want to say, oh, it's Russia's fault, it's the independent media's fault. But the, the fact is that Hillary Clinton went into that came, uh, campaign with more baggage than Kim Kardashian on a photo shoot. Cattlegate, Travelgate, Benghazi, uh, Chinagate. Uh, it's, it's a 30-year history of crimes and corruptions that she's managed to get away with along with her husband, Bill. Uh, and people remembered all of that. And apparently the attitude in Washington, D.C. is you shouldn't think, you shouldn't remember, you should just judge the election on the basis of what we tell you about the candidate this week. And it didn't work uh, because we have learned through long experience that the public image of a candidate uh, is usually at great odds with the reality of what that candidate is. And I can think of no better example of that recently than Anthony Weiner who, you know, got into Congress because he was handsome and he presented well. And then we find out he's a sleazebag, uh, you know, that was uh, sexting underage girls. And even after he got caught and lost his seat in Congress, he couldn't help it. He kept on doing it, which led to the FBI being forced to reopen their uh, investigation into Hillary's email server because the NYPD was going to start saying there is stuff on Anthony Weiner's laptop that had to come from the State Department that nobody's talking about. China has put out a warning telling Trump to get out of the one China policy and not promote uh, an independent Taiwan. Is this really a non-shooting war starting between China and the U.S.? Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. I don't think Trump is that heavily invested in the Taiwan area, and he's made statements earlier in the campaign about uh, really wanting to go back to being friends with Russia and China, accomplish peace through commerce and so forth. So I don't think Trump is going to make a stand on the Taiwan issue. Uh, the one area where I definitely disagree with incoming President Trump is uh, his obeisance to Israel. Uh, and part of that is because he got a lot of money from Sheldon Adelson, but then so did Hillary Clinton. Uh, these Israel firsters in our country, they give money to both sides of a campaign so that no matter what the voters do, they still have an in with whoever's going to be holding that office. And uh, one of my big concerns about Donald Trump all along has been that in many ways he's as politically naive as Jimmy Carter was going into the White House. Too much of his worldview is based on what he's seen on corporate media. And even though Trump now understands the corporate media is deceptive and adversarial to him, he hasn't gone through the mental exercise of looking back and saying, what else has the corporate media deceived me about? And certainly high on that list is going to be the situation in Israel and Palestine. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, what's your opinion of India's drive to seize cash and gold from people's homes? Well, it's already causing tremendous hardship. Uh, uh, basically, India uh, banned the two highest denomination notes, which effectively took 80% of the currency uh, value out of circulation. They want everybody using those little plastic cards. And as I predicted was going to be the case, when cash starts getting banned, so too would precious metals. And India, uh, up until this harebrained uh, stunt, uh, was one of the highest per capita consumers, uh, level consumers of gold. Everybody loved the bracelets. You go into any marketplace, you're going to see a store with, with chains and bracelets and rings and everything. They, they, they love their gold. Now India is confiscating gold from the Indian people in order to force them into dependency on that little plastic bank card. And uh, it's caused so much devastation that now India is saying they're going to have to have a universal basic income for all the people of India. The government's just going to hand out money to the people of India to try and get past this crisis. This is essentially communism taking root in India. And now apparently Finland is going down this same route, and we're finding out that all of this was being done under pressure from the United States government 
uh, which wants to make the world dependent on the, the private central banks uh, and uh, uh, impossible to get your own wealth out. Uh, one of the advantages for the bankers for a cashless society is if the bank gets in trouble, customers don't show up at the front door saying, give me my savings account, give me my savings account, because now the banks can say, there's no way I can give you that value. There's no currency, there's no money, all I can do is send it to another bank. And if you're not allowed to own investment silver and gold, then there's nothing you can do. You will have to leave your money here, and the laws now allow the banks to dip into your savings account if they get into financial trouble. Now, there has been once before in history a situation where a working population was not allowed to have their own money. Uh, they would work, and their masters would take the wealth generated by the work and keep it under their control. They'd make sure that the workers were fed and clothed and housed, but the workers were not allowed access to their own wealth that was produced by their labor, and that previous system was called slavery. And that's what they're aiming toward, a world where uh, you can work all day long, you are not allowed to have your own wealth under your own control, you are forced to be dependent on those banks who can take your money and do whatever they want with it. We're already seeing negative interest rates on savings accounts. Uh, and obviously one of the reasons to push for a cashless society is so that those negative rates on savings accounts can be increased uh, without the public standing up and saying, I want my money out of the savings account. No, no, you got to have it somewhere. And if you move it from our savings account to another savings account, that bank will help themselves to your money. I mean, it's a completely out of control, unrealistic system. And uh, the, the U.S. is trying to force it on the people of the world, and the people of the world are very, very unhappy about that. Uh, they're looking for ways that they can have portable stores of wealth, uh, to keep their wealth under their own control. And if they're not allowed silver and gold, then they'll stockpile ammunition or copper or tantalum or platinum or something. It is impossible to remove everything that can hold a value from planet Earth, uh, unless you're going to basically have everybody living uh, in the world envisioned by George Lucas in THX 1138. Scary movie. <laughs> yes. Bitcoin's becoming more popular. If you look at the price of it, is this a reaction to government's war on cash? I think it may very well be, uh, but the problem with Bitcoin as a virtual currency uh, is there is no commodity base for it, and it is wide open and subject to manipulations. Uh, and uh, uh, again, going back to the founding of the United States of America, uh, the money was the coinage. And the money was actually the metal content of the coinage, the silver, the nickel, the copper. And the, the, the idea was that when you had that coin in your hand, you had control over that money and of its worth. There was, once that coin was in your hand, there was nothing the banks or the government could do to change that value, and you were free to do whatever you wanted with it. Then, following the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the Federal Reserve and the government pulled a fast one. They took the silver out of the coinage. Now, up until that point, yes, there were paper notes in circulation, but those paper notes were not the money. They were claim checks. They actually would state all across the front of them that you could take that paper note into any bank and get the equivalent face value in lawful money, which meant the silver and nickel and copper coinage. That's what those paper notes were, the claim checks. Then following uh, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the silver was taken out of the coins, and magically overnight that piece of ink and paper became the money. And that little promise of uh, exchanging it for lawful money was removed from the front of the Federal Reserve note. Once that was done, the Federal Reserve was free to just overprint those bills willy-nilly. And today, uh, the U.S. dollar is worth about six cents of what a dollar was worth back at the founding of the Federal Reserve. And that's when it was backed by gold. That's when it was backed by silver and gold. A study in the U.K. has found that former Army guys say military training is far more traumatizing than actual war. What's behind that? Well, it very well may tr be uh, true because uh, you want your training to prepare your forces for the worst of what they're going to find out there. And then if they're trained up and they go on out and it turns out to be low-intensity warfare or, or, or just shooting the, the citizenry to steal their oil and everything, it's obviously not going to be as intense as your training. So uh, I, I, I don't see anything really unusual with that. 
Uh, we have family who are in the military, one who's in the Navy, uh, and uh, she's training to shoot cruise missiles and drones and, uh, at people. We all hope that when she actually puts to sea, she's not really going to do that, so that her obviously her at-sea experience is not going to be as traumatic uh, as her training was. There's reports the FBI has arrested a Volkswagen official in connection with the emission scandal. Is this the right thing to do to get big corporations to maybe obey the law? Absolutely. And one of the reasons our economy is so out of control is every time Wall Street is caught in another fraud, nobody goes to jail, nobody gets arrested. There'll be a risk slap fine, which is passed on to customers and taxpayers. Uh, if the banks really get in trouble from their fraud, the government's response has been to take a trillion dollars from the American people and give it to the bankers so the bankers can loan that money back to the American people at interest. It's a great deal for the bankers. It's a lousy deal for the American people. And because there's no incentive to comply with the law, fraud on Wall Street is just completely out of control. And also in Europe, uh, there's the LIBOR rigging, the rigging of gold and silver prices, uh, there's the overselling uh, of securities to multiple customers that happened back in 2008. That's felony fraud right there. Nobody ever goes to jail. The attitude of the U.S. government is we're going to just take money away from the people and give it to the banks so the banks can keep on doing what they're doing. I'm hoping that with uh, President Trump and a GOP Congress uh, in power, we're going to see Glass-Steagall brought back because Glass-Steagall was created in the wake of the 1930s Depression for a very, very good reason because that depression had in large part been caused by investment banks merging with depositor banks and using the depositors' money for high-risk uh, investments that went bad. And that's why Glass-Steagall was created. If you're a depositor bank, you are constrained to secure reliable, safe investments with that money. If you're an investment bank, you can invest in whatever wild-eyed scheme you want, but you've got to be using your own money to do it. Now, unfortunately, uh, in the uh, run-up to 2008, Glass-Steagall was repealed uh, by the uh, Dodd-Graham uh, Bleachley Act, I think it was, which was uh, nicknamed the uh, Citigroup uh, 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 Save Bill uh, because Citigroup had violated uh, 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 Glass-Steagall uh, by merging uh, Citibank with Travelers Group. Citibank was a depositor bank. Travelers Group uh, was an investment bank. It was a violation of Glass-Steagall. They should have uh, basically banned the merger. Instead, they changed the law, and everybody on Wall Street went crazy. I like this one item I saw on your website, Michael. Scientists say work before 10 a.m. is tantamount to torture. Well, then I'm in trouble because I start my day at 3 in the morning every day. Well, I've worked early morning radio, too, for most of my life, and getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning is tantamount to torture, as far as I'm concerned. And I found when I had a shift that was noon to 7, I was the most productive because I went in there wide awake and gladly went in even half an hour earlier than I had to. Yeah, I, I think maybe we need to get back to our natural rhythms in terms of work schedules, uh, but a lot of that has been overridden by... You know, this corporate idea, we want you there early, first thing in the morning, have your breakfast, have your coffee, come on in and do the work. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know that I agree that 10 in the morning is an ideal time to start. I certainly would love to be in a job where I didn't have to show up until 10 in the morning. Uh, but uh, certainly in our economy, uh, that's not going to come about for a long time. We have people working two and three part-time jobs, counted as three separate jobs by our, our Department of Labor. Uh, but Claire and I, we're working very, very long days, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. Would we be a more productive society if you could set your own working hours what you were more comfortable with? Because considering most of us work behind computers anyway, they don't care what time we work them. It's not like a farmer who has to milk a cow at 5 o'clock every morning. Well, we probably would be more productive. And there was, back in the 1990s, uh, a, a push toward uh, virtual work, where you were working at your job at home on your computer, uh, and it did seem to be producing very positive results, but it was opposed by the mid-management class, because if there aren't bodies in those cubicles, there's nothing for the middle-level managers to do, uh, and they, they were finding themselves uh, being let go. So they kind of lobbied and said, we need them here where we can crack the whip over them and 
uh, again, it was a case of vested self-interest interfering with what was actually the most productive. And finally, Michael, another very interesting article, the Green Party in Germany suggesting the government should pay for people to go to prostitutes if they had serious health problems, the person that they're paying for. Well, again, I understand that, uh, you know, uh, getting laid is going to improve your mental outlook, uh, but I, I don't think the German people are going to be very happy uh, paying for prostitutes that they themselves are not uh, availing themselves of. It, it does seem to be a little bit over the top, and I, I think with the pushback against liberalism in general uh, that we're going to see more and more extremism coming out of the Greens and the liberals trying to keep themselves, uh, if not relevant, uh, that at least uh, present in the media. And I think we're going to see a great deal of silliness get proposed in the near future. Michael, as always, thank you so much for chatting with us. As always, thank you for having me back. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. If you have any questions for us, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.